welcome back to my channel. It's Sonya Miller here of Junk Monkey Paint Company, and I'm here in my shop in Ligonier, Pennsylvania today. I'm gonna show you guys real quick a tutorial and how you too can make some really cute, what I call like whimsical field flowers. These are great for adding to decor or adding to your furniture pieces, and it's a great way to make your pieces look pretty custom, pretty unique, because it's all you. And so you can have fun with what I'm gonna share with you, and you can do it into like any colors that you want to. For today, I'm gonna use, for this project, I'm gonna use my antique lace chalky style paint, and I'm also gonna use my red apple chalky style paint, okay? We're gonna bring those two together, and I'm gonna put it on this surface that I have right here. So many of you may have seen me paint this um, over on our Facebook page. If you're not following me over there, there's all kinds of tutorials happening at all kinds, all days of all, all the times of all the days, okay? So make sure you go follow us over there. But what I did was I turned this into a layering piece. At one point I had a wreath on the top of it, now I'm gonna change it up today. That's how cool it is, right? So when you're tired of something, just change it up. So this was an old, um, an old, what do you call it? It's like, it's, it's cardboard backing. So, but it was an old print. That's the word I'm looking for. An old cardboard print that was outdated and it was in a frame. And a lot of times you can find pieces like this at your local thrift store, right? And you overlook them. So you can take a piece like this that already has the frame, that already has the backing, just paint over it. And now you have a beautiful surface to be able to create some beautiful painted things on it, right? So, I mean, I don't know about you, for like $3.99, $4.99, $5.99, you could not pay me all the hours of all the days to try to build something like this, right? So go grab this. This is a quick shortcut for you right there. So what I did already was I put down some paint on here. So I've used our red ochre milk paint to go ahead and get this like really, this is a burn red. The red I'm gonna use for the flowers today, the wild flowers, is gonna be red apple, okay? So it's a different sort of vivid red, whereas you guys, a lot of you know will know this color red is what you think of when you think of like barn red, right? But it's called red ochre in our Junk Monkey milk paint colors. And then I'm trying to remember what I use for the outside. I may have used the chalky style paint and I think it was an antique lace that I used here, okay? So there you go. All right, so let's get ready and carry on. So the supplies I've got today is a lovely paper plate. I've got one of my brushes. By the way, I'll link below my favorite brushes that I tend to use when I do like any sort of painting like this, decor painting, because they're not all created equal. So I'll share with you the favorite ones that I've come to you know, know and love. And I've got my red apple and I've also got two plastic spoons, okay? So instead of dumping from the side of my can, I only need a little bit. So when I have plastic spoons, um, I just love to be able to just, just to do this. So I'm saving my paint. I'm not losing lots over the edge. So let's just go ahead. You don't really need a whole lot, but I wanna make sure it's on both sides of the plate so I have a little going on and they're separated right now. Use a piece of chalk to go ahead and kind of lay out my plan. I always say a map is always good, right? You can go as big as you want with this, like one single flower on with a stem would be beautiful on this piece just to give the way it's laid out. You can go with multiple. I'm gonna go with multiple because I want you guys to be able to see this over and over again a few times so you can really see how it comes together, okay? So maybe I'll start Maybe I'll start like around the middle. Let's see here. Let's just go for it. Let's just wing it. Sometimes I find that once I put something down, then um, you know the rest of it you can fill out. I also do know that in design, things have three, leave them be, um, because it's just so much more satisfying for the eyes. Maybe I'm picturing right now like a flower here, a flower here, and a flower here, somewhere like that. So let's just go ahead and get started and see where it goes, all right? So what I'm gonna do is draw two lines right here this is going to be basically be my petals and I'm also going to be like this is kind of the shape you'll see what I mean when I do this so the cool thing is of course with um, maybe I'll just do one at a time and kind of show you how I map that out but the cool thing is that the chalk will come back off right so it's really easy when you use our paints you can use chalk over them to be able to give yourself a guideline so I've got my brush now what I'm gonna do is pick up a little bit of both, okay? So I do know that in flowers that the center tends to be darker, right? So I tend to pick up my red on one side and my antique lace on another. So do you see what's going on here? I've got a little bit of both going on, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started and you'll see how this works. Now I'm gonna turn my brush on the edge versus going this way um, to kind of create the petal look. So I see three petals right here. So let's go ahead and get started here. Let me load up a little bit more. I'm talking and doing this, but basically what I want is I'm creating these like ruffled petals and I like a little bit of a little bit of red, so maybe I'll go back over and add a little bit right there. Picking up two colors, right? I've got a lot of pink, red and antique lace is gonna make that pink. One, two, maybe we should call these ruffle flowers. I don't know. 
I don't know what you would call them, but basically, brushes on the edge. We're getting the edge of the petals, right? Okay, let's go ahead and do that bottom one. So do you see where this lays right here? Actually, let me just put a little, make this one a little bit bigger. So I want you to be able to see that def, those are definitely petals with like ruffled edges. And then right down here at the bottom, we wanna make this one close up the flower on the side that from this view right here as well. So make sure you got this where you want it to look first before you go ahead and you do the very same thing. You can leave a little, little space right there if you want because that's kind of the center. You can add some black there if you wanna do that. But we're gonna do with two colors, okay? Look how pretty that looks. I just love that. We'll put a little, maybe a black dab right there when we do our stems, okay? So there you go. All right, let's just do this really quickly and do the other ones as well. So we can add a little bit of darkening right here for the centers. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let me go ahead and grab my black velvet real quick. Got a little bit left of my black velvet here of the Chalky Style paint. So I'm gonna use that. I always say a little black, little brown is always good for every shabby painter's um, toolkit to have because it's just so versatile. And you can make some really cool like antique looks. So we're gonna obviously wanna put a center in here. And right now we have the red and we have the antique lace, which combined together gives us pink. And so you can see, right, just using two colors gives you a third color, which is always fun for when you're painting flowers. So what I'm gonna do now is just take another brush. It's a little bit smaller. Can you check that out? And again, I'll link my brush, my favorite brushes below. And I'm gonna put a little bit on here. I think at this point though, maybe I'm gonna scoop some out. Let's see, I mean, I barely got any left at the very bottom of my can here, but we're gonna make it work. I'm gonna put some out right here. And I think I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of water. So here's a cheat trick for you guys. If you ever want to, even when you're painting furniture, you're doing washes, if you ever want to thin out your paint, add a little bit of water. But when you're painting decor pieces like this, the nice thing is when you add water, if you come in a little bit close, can you see that as I've added it there? It really waters it down. And so what will happen is, I'm just blending it really, really well here. But what will happen is it allows your paint to travel a little smoother. So when you're doing things like stems, and uh, what we're gonna do here, you'll just find that it just carries in your brush so much nicer and very much more whimsical, all right? So let's go ahead and add a little bit of a stem right there. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Let's imagine that that stem would come all the way through there and go all the way down. So now we have three stems going down. We're gonna take right here, this is where will be maybe where the black center would come out. Let's go ahead and put a little flower there. Let's put one right there and put one right there. So the thinner your brush, obviously the thinner these strokes are gonna be, but um, that's something that you get to play with. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little, just something like to kind of like denote this is the center right here. So I don't know what kind of flowers these are, but you know, they're whatever you wanna make them, right? We can add a little bit as well, some darkening. Remember there's three leaves right here. So let's go ahead and add just a little bit to kind of break them up a little bit. So down here, I can see that I missed a little bit of my blending, right? It really blended in so well. So I'm okay with like creating some, just some edges, right? Okay, perfect. Remember three leaves on the top and then you have your, your bigger petal. I keep calling them leaves on the bottom. So this is pretty much, let me get the water watered down version. So this is pretty much where they are here. And then we've got our bottom right here. There we go. All right, so I do like that. My Chevy flowers, perfectly imperfect. Nothing crazy, right? So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe even add a little bit of white. I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna use my painter's tarp. You guys know that I love my painter's tarp for this reason. I get to keep using it to clean my brushes. Saves me with my paint spills, but also um, it's just really good to be able to use for wiping off your brushes. And at the end of the day, I just have a beautiful paint tarp. All right, so I went ahead real quick because I didn't have an extra spoon, poured some out, adding some water. 
using my same brush, I'm just gonna clean it off just a little bit, make sure it's full of that antique lace. Really get it nice and watery. All right, and the same sort of thing. So this is just gonna add some more definition to those flowers. Just a few strokes is all you need. You, but I think and that's pretty darn groovy. I like it. You can put a little bit over the um, the black as well, the, the stems that you did. Love, love, love that, right? So now I wanna fill in some areas here as well. So I think I'm gonna fill in the areas right here as well. I'm just gonna use the back of my brush. In fact, I'm gonna go for the bigger, the chunkier back of my paintbrush, dip it right in, and add a few little dots here and there that really, match the frame of this piece. Again, things of three, leave them be in the decorating world, right? But this is a great way if you have space left over when you paint something and you just kind of want to fill it out so you don't have all this blank canvas, right? Just a few is all you need. Sometimes less is more. All right, so I really, really like that. And you'll find that the more that you dab your, your um, back of your brush, what happens is you know, it drops off. And so if you want the bigger drops, that's what you're gonna get when you first do your first few dabs, and then they'll just consecutively get smaller as you go, right? So I do love that. What do you think, guys? I think we should add a little bit of just sun-kissed on these, um, just a little bit of white on these little doodads, we'll call them. All right, so that's pretty cool. So now I've got some black going down in here. I've got the antique lace right here. I've got the antique lace in here and then it's mixed into the petals. Now, like I say, for eye balance, I do like to do some edging on my pieces because it just makes it look really cool. It brings the inside to the outside so it matches up. It has great eye balance. And plus this frame, this really cheap thrift store frame, as I told you, has got some beautiful step down. Somebody took the time to create this frame, right? So let's just play it up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and Grab a brush. Actually, let me grab, me grab one of my shabby chip brushes for this part. Use my shabby chip brush. This one's been around the town. That's okay. You guys know I use my brushes till the cows come home. As a shabby painter, they just get better with age. True story. But what I'm doing right now is just adding a little bit so that carries over to the outside. So guys, I hope you've loved this video, giving you some ideas. Remember, your flowers can be imperfectly perfect. You can do all kinds of fun colors. I mean, teal flowers would be pretty too, right? You can do all that. That's totally up to you, but you have free reign because when you're the creative, you hold creative control. There is no right, there is no wrong way, and things don't have to be perfect. In fact, I'm a painter that loves it when things are loosely done. You, know, you can see what they are, but you know what? We're not sitting here tracing out the actual flowers. I don't even know what kind of flowers these are. All I know is that they are gorgeous and they would be so pretty on a piece of painted furniture. Make them as big as small as you want and then of course make sure you post them over at our Junk Monkey Paint Projects page here on Facebook. It's a free group. We have right now like over I think we're pushing like getting close to 3,000 painters in that group. So go over and see what everybody's up to okay. So you ready for the big reveal? How to do cheap art for your wall okay. Right there. Right there. How cool is that? Add in whatever else makes your heart happy. So thank you so much for joining me for this quick, shabby, wildflower tutorial. What kind of flowers do you think they are? Type them below. I have no idea what they are, but they're just gorgeous, right? So uh, thank you guys for subscribing to our channel. Be sure to hit the like button and give us, give us a big thumbs up. That really helps us and helps us continue to be able to do these tutorials for you guys as well. And don't forget to hit the bell. What that means is that you never miss another upload or another tutorial or some other fun stuff going down here at the Junk Monkey. You guys take care. Bye.